Hello everybody, Rupert Goff here from Mortgage Lab. Today I'm talking about the new housing supply bill, what it is and what it may mean for you. Let's party. The full name is the Resource Management Enabling Housing Supply and Other Matters Amendment Bill, but that is a mouthful, so let's just call it the Housing Supply Bill. This might sound like a pretty dry topic to be talking about, but it will affect many people's neighbourhoods and hopefully achieve its goal of increasing opportunities for people to own their own home. So, what is in the Resource Management Amendment Bill? The bill proposes amendments to the Resource Management Act of 1991 to accelerate the implementation of the National Policy Statement on Urban Development from 2020. The purpose is to improve supply in New Zealand. At the time of recording, the bill has gone through first reading and is now in select committee. Both National and Labour are keen to get it in law as soon as possible, so it should progress quickly. The basic premise of the bill is this. Barriers to medium density development in New Zealand's five largest cities will be removed. These cities are referred to as Tier 1 and comprises Auckland, Hamilton, Tauranga, Wellington and Christchurch. The part of the bill that most people are interested in is the Medium Density Residential Standards or MDRS. These standards will mean Tier 1 councils won't be able to decide which areas or sites can and can't be built up to become a medium density to a point. Councils will be able to have restrictions on areas where there are certain features. This means areas with nationally significant infrastructure, natural hazards, open spaces provided for public use and heritage significance. In locations where the standards do apply, three homes of up to three storeys on up to 50% of a site will be allowed to be built without requiring resource consent. There is a deadline of August 2022 for the councils to implement processes to support this law change. As part of implementing the new standards, Tier 1 councils will also be required to follow a new streamlined planning process. And because the government loves long titles and acronyms, they are referring to the new process as the New Intensification Streamlined Planning Process, or ISPP. So what about areas outside of Tier 1 cities? Are they affected? Tier 2 cities or towns could be required to adopt the new standards and planning process if they're ever considered to be in acute need of more housing. Tier 2 is made up of Whangarei, Rotorua, New Plymouth, Napier, Hastings, Palmerston North, Nelson, Tasman, Queenstown and Dunedin. As for the expected impact of these changes, PwC consultants estimate both the amendment bill and the implementation of the National Policy Statement on Urban Development 2020 will mean between 48,000 to 105,000 new builds in the next five to eight years. Taking a guess, the wide ranging number may be allowing for likely labour and material supply issues as well as big infrastructure challenges in areas such as Auckland where a large amount of new builds will be located. These challenges could all result in slowing the number of new homes. The big question of course is, will the housing supply issue be fixed by these changes? Let's say all of these changes result in the creation of 100,000 new builds within the next decade. Would it solve the housing shortage? It's a surprisingly hard question to answer. Experts struggle to identify the actual housing shortage number. Some estimate the current housing shortage to be around 40,000, others put it closer to 70,000. Some say there are enough houses already, it just comes down to a higher amount of investment properties versus owner-occupied than any time previously. Others say the issue is regional. Some regions have an undersupply, some have an oversupply, and they balance each other out at a national level. Which of course is a bit beside the point when you can't get a home in the city you live in. Then there's the population growth to take into account. Over 10 years, the population is expected to increase by anywhere between 100,000 to 850,000. This big range means it's hard to say whether the housing shortage will be solved, even with 100,000 new builds. But while the true impact of these changes are yet to be known, there is little doubt that they will significantly increase the creation of new homes. So for the first time in a long while, there is the possibility of the housing shortage easing or even disappearing entirely in some places. Given this, those looking to buy now in a very hot market may be wondering whether to wait. Now, no one can predict the future, but when you look at the long term, the answer to when should I buy a house has always been yesterday. I see that now. 
There's been fluctuations and stagnations in the market, but over time, property has always gone up. Of course, previous performance isn't an indicator of future performance, but even with the projected acceleration of new builds, industry leaders aren't forecasting a big dip in property prices. So as a long-term investment, you should feel relatively confident about the benefits of purchasing a property now. Another aspect to consider is the features of the homes you may be in the market to buy now. The law changes allow for higher density buildings within suburbs. This means over time there will be a lot more smaller properties with little outdoor space. A property bought now with a decent bit of garden is likely to become much more rare, valuable and sought after in the future. That's it for the new housing supply bill. If you've got questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. I'm Rupert Goff from The Mortgage Lab. Talk to you soon.